Dr. Campbell responds to written accusation of child sex abuse. Embattled Firebrand General Secretary of the People's National Party, Dr. Dayton Campbell, has responded to a major development in a potential sex scandal that is threatening his political career because of damning allegations that he had sexual relationship with several underage girls as recently as 2016. Under Jamaican law, it is an offense to have sex with a person under the age of 16. Apart from being a medical doctor, Campbell is also a lawyer by training and a former two-term lawmaker which represented the People's National Party in the Northwest St. Anne constituency up to the time he lost the seat in September 3rd, 2020 general election. Campbell has previously denied the allegations and threatened his accusers, PNP activist Karen Cross and two bloggers, Natalie Stark and Michelle Stern, with a defamation lawsuit that was filed in March of this year, telling them to effectively put up or shut up. But undeterred by the threat of legal action, Cross has filed her own countersuit and, under Jamaica's libel and defamation law, the person accused of libel or defamation is given an opportunity to provide evidence showing that they are telling the truth. In other words, the truth is a defense where libel or defamation is cited. While the court will ultimately decide crosses, Counter suit, three young women who were all under the age of 16 when the alleged incident took place have given statements which are said to have been witnessed by Justice of the Peace, claiming that they had sexual relationships with Campbell on several occasions. The claims pointed to a modus operandi that reportedly involved him showing the minors and their relatives with gifts and also transporting the girls to and from political campaign events and conferences. Campbell also allegedly paid school fee for one of the alleged victim. He also allegedly had sex with his accuser in various places, including hotels and in a car. The statements form part of the defense that is being mounted by Cross. That defense was filed in the Supreme Court on March 13 and is now a public document. In this lawsuit, Campbell accused Cross and the other defendants of spreading false and defamatory comments on social media, alleging that he had sex with girls who were under the age of 16. The first of the three statements from the No Young Women is dated March 1, 2021 and involves an alleged victim who was just 14 years and 9 months old when she said she began having sex with Campbell. The alleged victim said she had intercourse with the medical doctor three times with the last occasion being a Friday when the political parties were campaigning for the 2016 general election that was held on February 25. The young woman described how she and the other girls would drive around with Campbell, who is also married and a father, in sections of his constituency and said he took them to many places. According to the court documents, the alleged victim spoke to Cross about the situation in 2019. Campbell's second accuser provided her statement on March 12, 
2021 and detailed how she started a sexual relationship with the now former MP in 2014 when she was 15 years old. The alleged victim disclosed that Campbell would take her to hotels to have intercourse. She said they had intercourse in Kingston, Manchester and Clarendon while Campbell was on the campaign trail. That alleged relationship reportedly lasted until 2016. During that time, Campbell reportedly assisted the child's family, including her mother. The victim said she expressed to Cross that she was scared and said he liked her sister. She also said she was fearful of her mother. The third statement is dated March 18, 2021, and the then 15-year-old girl said she started having intercourse with Campbell after he commented on the size of her breasts, asking her if she was sure she was 15. She said she met the politician after her mother told her to ask him for assistance with her school fee and told her to inquire about a job for her brother. She too said she began going places with Campbell after he provided help to her family and paid her school fees. She said he took her virginity. Like the others, the third accuser said she traveled to several parishes with Campbell. She said she had sex with him because she liked him. She too reportedly told Cross that she was scared. The statements were signed and stamped by two JPs. One JP said she had seen the passports of two of the accusers. Of note is that after launching an investigation into the claims against Campbell in April of this year, the police soon ended their pro stating that they had found no basis for the allegations and that no witness had come forward. In a statement in response to the latest development, Canberra said the following in part. I reject in the strongest of terms recent and ongoing allegations made against my character by Karen Cross et al., these allegations have been circulated widely across social media platforms and covered by many traditional media houses. When allegations first surfaced online, the People's National Party referred the matter to the police. I then filed a lawsuit against Karen Cross et al. for defamation, having publicly denied the allegations. After intensive investigations into the claim, the police stated they have found no basis to the allegations that were made. The police further noted that Ms. Cross provided no evidence to substantiate the claims that she made, nor was she able to provide any person interested in making a complaint against Dr. Campbell. In May 2021, Miss Cross filed a set of documents in her defense. Included were three statements purportedly signed by a justice of the peace. All three statements were heavily redacted to hide pertinent information in the document. The names of the alleged authors of the statements were all redacted from the submission to the court. The statements which have been submitted by her were dated before the police concluded their investigation and before the lawsuit was filed and most importantly, these statements were not provided to the police. Even more so, the justice of the peace who allegedly witnessed these statements would be obliged under the Child Care and Protection Act to bring these matters to the attention of the police, yet the police remain unaware of any 
such letters.